Hello, I'm Reese, and welcome to the world of twisted videos and rubber monsters. These are great movies, and they're movies everybody should see at least once in their lives. Today, I'm looking at the classics. We've got a naked woman in a golden mask fighting a man with a laser bow and arrow. And we've got the ultimate space battle. A weird cat. We're going to be showing you a clip of the fastest archer in the world. And forget Ghostbusters, it's the original Dream Blob. The Aspects. And we've also got the best film that has zombie type creatures that aren't from outer space, but they live under a bridge. First off, let's travel to a different time. It's a time before science, it's a time before magic, it's a time when special effects should probably just be known as effects. The year is 1983 and the film is Conquest. The story goes something like this. A blob lives on a beach with his family. Oh shit, sorry. So Fucking it went in, into focus. Basically, the story goes like this. A bloke lives on a beach with his family who give him a laser bow and arrow. Yes, it's a bow and arrow that fires lasers. He's then told to go off and kill a woman who's completely naked and wears a golden mask because she's making everybody's lives a misery. But just bear with me because he also hooks up with a mate who's got two dog's legs tied together by a bit of rope which he uses as a weapon. Yeah. And then they hang out together for a bit and go on the most surreal killing spree I've ever seen in my life. A woman gets ripped in half, there's weird wolf men, and a load of blokes in rubber who hang out by some rocks. Right, check this out, there's the rocks. Um, right, look, um, naked, but look at the, oh, tits. Oh. Now what's next? Look, check it out, here we go, look. What's this? Two dog's legs held together by a bit of rope, yes. Of us must face evil. Some men retreat and take shelter. Others hold their ground and fight back even at the cost of their lives. Wolfman, there? Thanks! I've come back! I'm not afraid! Here we go, he's not afraid to use his laser bow and arrow. Go on, kill something! Yes! <laughs> Yes, top of a man's head comes off, and then what happens? They rip a woman in half. Yes! The great Cronus, many and many suns ago, fought with this bow and drove back the terrible creatures that invaded our land, shooting out a deadly hail of flaming arrows at all of his enemies. Capture the stranger, Fargo. Who are you? My enemies call me Mix. And your friends? I don't have any friends. So why did you save my life? If you don't stop the Wanderers, or I'm doomed. He won't go much further. I promise. Get down! Oh. Oh, boobs. <laughs> Ogren, I've come to avenge my friends. Today the sun will rise without you, Ogren. Yeah, go on. Frank Gallagher from Shameless. In. Do you want me to say it now? Yeah, go on, action. All right, okay. Uh, it was a great year. The year was 1980. It was the year that Iron Maiden released the album Iron Maiden and the film Hawk the Slayer was out. It's the story of two brothers. One's called Voltron and one's called Hawk. I fucking love the name Voltron. Hawk, not too bothered about. One's good, one's evil. The good one has got a plastic sword with a hand on the end of it. The music in this film is amazing. Every time you see our hero, Hawk, you get this music. 
It's like when you turn a computer on, you know. I saw this film for the first time in a hotel in London that I was staying at with my parents when I was eight, and I shat myself. Will no one run near this madman? And I'm done! Laser arrows. <laughs> Laser. Look at this. Splash. Put your arms up. Look at that. Psh, that. That's crap. That's just disco smoke. Bang! Oh, what's that? Oh no! It's loads of funny lights. Shit. He's an expert fisherman. He looks like Timothy Claypole off of Rent a Coast. It's a giant. It's Bernard Breslau. Got to have Bernard Breslau in a film. Laser arrows. Then some sort of clever mask. There's Hawk. Oh, where's he gone? Check out that 80 synth. This is the big fight scene, the big finale. Doo, dang, doo, 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 lasers. <laughs> Bang! What's that? Oh, disco. Open the doors. Disco smoke. <laughs> More laser arrows. Bit of fake snow. Then here we go. Ka-ching! Ka-ching! Fighting this hawk against Voltran or whatever his name is. Hawk's got, remember, he's got a, a sword with a hand on it, which makes him better. The edge of darkness. There is a world of sword and sorcery. He's Hawk the Slayer. He's the king. Next up, weird cats, young girls, and a flesh eating piano. Yes, it's House, or Hausu as it's known in its native Japanese tongue. This film was made in 1973 by a bloke called, um, hang on, uh, no, Nobuhiko Obayashi. I've probably got the name completely wrong. Either way, he started out making adverts and ended up, yes, being dead, like most of them. This film is absolutely fantastic, and the storyline goes something like this. A young girl is very excited to go on holiday with her dad. Oh shit, I'm having me. Yeah, that's good. So this is how it rolls. A young girl is excited about going on holiday with her dad until he decides to mention that he's gonna bring his fancy woman along. This obviously upsets the girl, so she sacks it off and decides to go and visit her aunt on holiday with six of her mates. The problem is, her aunt's dead and the house is haunted, which in turn means the house is full of evil spirits and there's gonna be tears and blood and severed limbs and blood. Check it out. Here we go now. Brilliant film. House. My gran had a clock like that. There's no blood in it though. Here we go now. I Yay! see the rise where tomorrow is hiding. Oh, young girls. Not a she's a munter. The rainbow, I'm sliding. Oh, older woman getting. Said she was a munter. Shut up! Here we go now, here we go. What is it? Evil cat! Now, a piano eating a woman. Where else will you see that? Nowhere else except in... House. House. If you like what? Stop it. Quiet, please. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Quiet on set. So this is the premise, right? For no reason whatsoever, 12 zombie-type creatures live underneath the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco and come out at night, right, to get you if you're the youth having a good time, maybe taking drugs, maybe just hanging out in a park. I don't know. I'll get a blow job. I'll get a blow. So one night in a park, right, there's this girl, and I think she's broken up with her boyfriend, can't remember. I think her name's Natalie, and they go up in one of these trucks, and they go up into the park, and then the 12 zombies of the apocalypse come to get them. One's called Slasher, one's called Juice, one's called Samurai, one's called Keith, I think. And basically, 
they will fuck you up. It's amazing. One of the dudes is getting a blowy off his missus, and uh, we'll show you this. We'll show you this. Can, show, can we show this? Guess his head cut off. Yeah, go on, yeah. Neon Maniacs. This is Neon Maniacs now. You're telling me that these things are inside the Golden Gate Bridge. One. Two. That they only come out at night. That they're responsible for the death of 15 or more kids and three of my police officers. How come the police never believe a word you say? Ridiculous. They're after me. And every one of them is a killer. Introducing Axe, Hangman, Doc, Biker. Honestly, what, what the fuck is that? It's like a one eyed thing. There you go. Who's he? Don't know what's going on there. It's a bit too dark. But dragging a body away. He's probably going to eat it or have sex with it. I don't know. This guy, I think he's a policeman. It's a bit like the village people, this, but he's having a fight now. Change, whips and change. Smashes his face in. He's done for, right? But what's going to happen? He's going to rip his leg off! Oh! oh! Nasty. Who are these dudes? Some young kids making out now. What the fuck are you guys dressed for? Don't think they're up for a good time. They look kind of, That one looks a bit like Maggot. You play football? Clearly not. You guys want to play rough? No, that didn't work very well, did it? What's going to happen now? So this is Rita, she's in the car, um, she's gonna, she thinks they're after her. Look at that thing, it's only got one eye, it's amazing. And uh, it's game over for her. Look at this. Lovely music, There's, here he is, he's, out, he's knackered, he's had too much to drink, he's chilling out. This is what the Ute do in the parks, just have a chill now, relax. You know, have a lie down. And what's this jizz on his face? And a foot? What's that? Look, here we go, he's having a nice blowy. What's happened there? Where's me blowy gone? Has a look. It's Maggot. And he's going to cut him in half. Nasty. What could happen to you? That's cool. Smash him through a door and a bike. Juice. Electricity. Samurai. Archer. Seriously, this is the best film I've ever seen. These are the Neon Maniacs. Watch Neon Maniacs. If you don't watch Neon Maniacs, your, your life isn't worth living. Seriously. Scum. 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 Watch it. Finally, back to Britain for a good old dose of British horror. Yes. It's The Asphyx, directed by a guy called Peter Newbrook, who is also dead. Uh, it stars Robert Powell, who possibly has the best hair I've ever seen in a film in my life. The storyline goes pretty much like this. A very rich man at the turn of the century buys a box camera and realizes when taking pictures of people about to die, he can capture their souls. After a little bit of experimentation, he makes a machine that can physically capture the soul, which essentially is like a really crap version of the green block from Ghostbusters, and it does something like this. Absolutely amazing. Check this out. See him? He's gonna die. Now, get ready! The soul's stuck. Hey! I'm at brunch! Gutted. At the first sign of death, it begins a cry of torment that drives the dying mad. The aspects, more than a myth, more than a maybe. A smudge. Don't get that with digital. And another one, here, and finally another here. Jill sees the maggot. Gentlemen, what you have seen, what we have recorded, is the soul at the moment it departs the body. So a bit like a really rough curry. The aspects, more than a myth, more than a maybe. Good grief. I tell you, it saw me. Look at, look at Robert Powell's lovely hair, look at it in that box. Here is a man, a minute from death, without a soul, with only one way back through the secret of the Asphinx. Train light on the Asphinx. 
Is it maggot again? Not for me, no! Untidy! The force within you that brings insanity at the instant of death. From birthday to death day controls the most terrifying moment of your life. Your death. The Asphinx. Oh dear. Looks like the Asphinx got a bit excited. The Asphinx. More than a myth. More than a maybe. Absolutely amazing. I think uh, we got stomach acid. Yeah, yeah, too much, too much um, red onion in that sandwich earlier. Who would have thought you have a sandwich off a transverse side? This film, stop making me laugh. This film is green slime. It's a bit like Bruce Willis's arm again at the beginning, and then it goes fucking nuts. Basically, they have to go and blow up this giant asteroid, right, which is threatening the Earth. So they go there, go onto the asteroid, blow it up, they come back, but they haven't washed themselves properly, and they're covered in green slime. And if you thought that was bad, it gets even worse because the green slime grows into these six foot monsters with one eye with like these sex probes, and when they get you, you're gonna die. The green slime. So this is green slime. Green slime. Luciana Paluzzi. Never heard of her. Richard Jacob. Never heard of him either. You make too many mistakes. You're not right for command. This is my command and I'll manage it. Two men struggle for survival in the infected remains of a diseased universe. It's on me! It's on me! Ah! Sick. Get everybody out. You're on a spaceship. Where are you going to go? chance to save the human race from the desperate hunger of the green slime. Imagine that on top of you. Open the door, you find the secret. To find the answer is to... Seriously though, when it comes to theme tunes, it doesn't get a lot better than this. Well, it probably does. There, there are other films that have got... Um, Ocean's, Ocean's 10, I think. Um, was his name who did the theme tune for that, Vern? George Clooney. George Clooney did the theme tune for that, and that's wicked. But it's pretty good anyway. The green slime. Yeah, green slime. So that's it for now. Until next time, I'm off into a small dark room to watch rubber monsters eating people's faces. And I'm just going home because we're in Vern's house and it stinks. <laughs> so until then, remember, when there's no more room left in hell, the dead shall work in Blockbuster Video. Get in. Are you making egg sandwiches? Wicked. Can I stop now? Yeah.